that's the sizzling hot runway of the moment, the hippest and trendiest fashion all under one roof with 50 shows and events right here at the third annual Singapore Fashion Festival. Now, talking about fashion, we of course have our own preferences and our own ways of expressing ourselves. Take a look at this, for example, butterfly collar shirts, low rise boot cut jeans, while for some, it could go high glam beaded couture gowns. Good fashion for me is to be able to hide whatever's bad flaws in a person and show off your best. Good fashion in general is great lines, something that draws you to it. Artistic expression. It's all about artistic expression. They can love it or they can hate it, but at least they saw it. At least they made a comment. At least it moved people. Good fashion is really about being yourself and being able to express yourself wearing whatever you feel comfortable in. You don't care what other people think and you just do what you want, even if it's a bit crazy. Now what's in vogue changes dramatically over a very short period of time. There was a time when the Chinese Chong Sam or the Indian Sari were the source of inspiration for many of the world's top designers. Asian influence fashion became the in thing back then. But can Asian fashion really take on the world big time? In terms of Asian fashion, uh, we have Japanese fashion, we have Korean fashion, Hong Kong fashion, and Singapore fashion. They're all different in their own ways and they're all unique in their own ways, which is actually quite different from the West. It's designers from Asia adding their Asian identity into what they do, which is a Western idiom. That's going to create Asian fashion. So my conclusion is that it's starting to happen. In terms of rich color, um, textures, I think it's great when designers sort of design what they see around them because that's sort of thing that you don't have anywhere else in the world in terms of the hillside, the landscape, the color, the texture, the people. So I think Asian fashion sort of has a flair all by itself. I really think as a region, as we get more self-confident in ourselves, there's a growing appetite for Asian designers, definitely. Whether it's from Asia or from Europe, the most important is, or it all depends on the designers themselves, what they like and what they are strong in their own personality to create the brand that they have under them. An exquisite handwork and detailing is clearly Francis Chong's strength in designs. Often inspired by the Orient, Francis has chosen to go bohemian with a Tibetan twist for his latest collection, specially created for the Lancôme Mirage d'Ete show at the festival. We can call it Asian-inspired fashion, but we cannot call them Asia fashion, because now we are talking on the topic of Asian designers. So, unless a designer is totally confined to making kabayas every season, or cheongsam every season, that they have maybe changed the print or the colour. Apart from selling to an exclusive clientele in Singapore, Francis's ardent fans also include fashionistas from Indonesia and Malaysia. The strategy he used to take his designs overseas is pretty straightforward. I think the best market, the own product, the designer's product, is um, through really people wearing them. Either you through real people, like through what people talk about your clothes. And on top of them, of course, you have the budget. It's good to throw lots and lots of fashion campaigns, shows, to bring more awareness to people around either you in Asia or in Europe. What you up to? Why Kid Song of Singapore's very own urban chic label, Song and Kelly, can't agree more. A lot of designers in Singapore are still emulating what the West are coming up with. You know, so in terms of trends and, 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 and themes and, and things like that, we're, we're still following. You know, but there will come a time where um, Singapore designers are confident enough to say that um, I've got my own style. It's, it's when you start showing to them that this uniqueness is from that part of the world 
that they can buy into is when Asian fashion um, starts developing and starts gathering momentum. Song and Kelly is one of the best known labels that has come out of Southeast Asia breaking onto the UK market in the 90s. Introducing his unique style to the Western world has always been in the plans and it's through perseverance and hard work the plan was realized. We realized that we, we have our own um, uniqueness in terms of the fabrics that we use. Um, like you said, the, the packaging, you know, our, our, our handwriting, as they say in, in, the, in the fashion terms. You know, and, and all that is, is, I suppose, very unique to Song Kelly. And, and that's what our customers look for. And that's what I suppose when buyers from, from international stores, when they look at our, our label, when I look at our designs, is, is what they see as well. Um, but then ultimately, it's, it's also, um, uh, and this is what we've learned um, all these years doing our own label and also working um, in Milan before coming back to Singapore, is, is listening to, to our customers and um, listening to what they, they need and listening to what they want. Being a good designer is, is all about um, enhancing people's lives or enriching people's lives. All right, with uh, Yoji Yamamoto designing here for Adidas, a Japanese fella designing for an international brand, where is this, is this a trend of Asian designers emerging? It's not a trend it's so far as that Asian designers have been recognized and, and because they are recognized for their ability or their sensibility, brands like Adidas, even Puma, have now incorporated or asked Japanese designers to design special items for them because street fashion is what's the happening thing now it's it's and everybody has a t-shirt they have a pair of jeans but those who are a little bit more affluent or just want to be a little bit different they want a designer attached to a street brand right. and so adidas recognizes it first and they were the first to ask uh, to bring in yoji to design a range for them you brought up asian sensibility what is this all about well it's just like a t-shirt you know when you think of a, a t-shirt you just think of a round neck but then right. you see just a little detail like this asymmetric and a little couple of buttons it's, it's a similar, you can see there's a difference to it, you know. But other than that, yes, it's a t shirt, it's a t shirt. But this it, is where the Asian where inspiration, the Asian comes, inspiration in. comes in. Yes. Okay, this is your GMO. Yeah. So, and yes. what, what other Asian well, uh, themes do all these yeah, designers well, use right now? Other brands have followed suit, and so people like uh, Fred Perry has brought in a Comme des Garçons designer, who, as you know, is, is, she's just uh, famous for her deconstructed look. And uh, he's, she's designed a range for him. I think that most people nowadays realize that Asian element, or rather Japanese element, sells. Okay, I'm gonna try this on. Tan is working on his show to be staged at the Singapore Fashion Festival. This is his first ever after winning last year's Mercedes-Benz Asia Fashion Award. I think fashion chose me instead of me choosing fashion, you know. It's, it's the absolute truth because I always knew that I wanted um, to be a designer at a young age of 13 or 14 and I wasn't really concentra uh, concentrating very much on my studies. More meaningful to Sven was the opportunity to intern in Europe, which came together with the award he won last year. Impressed by her talent, Singapore fashion icon Tina Tan Leo signed on Sven to be the designer for her first private label. What's important is to me uh, in a designer is his passion. Without passion, 
you can't move forward because you'd be just designing the you know dresses or, or creating things that uh, uh, that you have to do because it's a it's it's work and it's for the business but with passion and patience and uh, and all the willing willingness to learn i think that's a great asset and that's what um, i see in sven If you think of a young Asian designer venturing out into Europe and spending a month there um, trying to absorb the European sensibility, it's a really eye-opener for me and I think it has also helped me um, develop this label in a more confident way, the label which I'm designing for The Link. It's called All Dressed Up. I also feel that um, in this award, it's sort of given more recognition and also more credibility for um, to Asian younger designers. Earlier this year, the finest fashion designer from around the region were competing for a chance to represent their country right here in Singapore. And now, two of the best fashion designers from each country are here vying for the Mercedes-Benz Asian Fashion Awards and a chance to work in the world's fashion capital, Milan. Today I get off so early and to the airport and it is trip so rush and uh, I'm so exciting to this competition. Uh, I'm very confident with myself and I want to win this um, competition. Yeah. is a very important moment, if not the only moment that really matters for our designers right here. This is where they get to present, describe, and even defend their creations in front of a panel of seven judges. I'm with uh, Hiroko Ueno right here, one of the uh, competitors for the Asian Fashion Awards. Hiroko, your first time here? Yes, it's the first time. And how prepared are you for this uh, awards? Oh, I'm prepared for now and for the show tomorrow, I think. Well, what do you think the judges are looking for? Looking for... Um, this time is really to ready to wear, but then with a good balance of creativity and the integrity in the designs. So what's a good ready to wear outfit? Uh, maybe show me something right uh, here. Ready to wear it. is a bolero jacket. Yeah, it's actually beaded and the peacock feathers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and. And how important are the accessories that you're putting here? What is this, a beetle? Yeah, <laughs> it actually shows like um, a fusion of the classic and contemporary, the vintage and the modern. Yeah, so I want to give it that very mysterious feel. Last year, Titi Fong from Bangkok was here helping a friend out at the Asian Fashion Awards. This time around, you're here. So uh, tell me about the collection. My collection is about the people in the city. My concept is urban citizen. It's a story about the people who live in the city. They need something special but very simple. Okay, what we'd like to know is if Titipon learned anything last year while you were here while helping your friend out. Yes, I, I've learned that here in Singapore, I think they need something simple, very simple, but have just a little bit detail, which is very important. To me as a judge, I'm looking for somebody, a designer that has a modern sensibility combining uh, their skills with the Asian culture. 
Uh, what I'm impressed is to combine in a very special uh, way the different materials and have a little bit her own handwriting inside uh, her design. It was very wonderful. How do you think it did in there? I think I like it because it's quite really ready to wear. It can be mixed and matched with other things in daily life. Baleen Lee is one of Singapore's two winning designers taking part in this year's Asia Fashion Awards. A Taiwanese native trained in New Zealand and based in Singapore, the city she chose to launch her own label. Singapore, is, to me, is the center of everything. Um, it's so close to everywhere else and it's a good place to start a new business. With the money that her boyfriend had set aside for an MBA degree, Baleen started her first boutique at Stanford House. In just over a year, Baleen has taken the label abroad, selling to countries like Malaysia, Taiwan, and Japan. Business is always a challenge, um, but in fashion, you are only as good as your last season. So I guess that if you want to keep your branding going, it has to have a really strong personality behind this brand. Having a flair for design is only the beginning. What's equally important is the marketing, the artists behind the designs. All right, I'm standing right here with the designer from New Zealand, Karen Walker, is here to tell us all about marketing. Karen, how did you start making it big overseas? Showing up really helps. Showing you know, up like just, what you're doing You've got now. to get there. Okay. And um, and just really, it all comes down to the product. You know, if you don't, it doesn't matter how many PRs you hire or how many press releases you write or. Yeah, all that stuff, it means nothing if the product's no good. So. How about designer hype? I mean, there's a lot of designer hype behind every product. Is that an important aspect of uh, marketing? It is an important aspect of marketing, but at the end of the day, if the designs are bad, the designs are bad, and no amount of hype is going to fix that. So I think that the most important ingredient with any designer is that the designs work. And then on top of that, you know, there's a lot of other things that you can add into the recipe that that you, will help you make it, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to the product. All right, I'm here with Ashley Isham, the big thing in European royal circles and the toast of Singapore as well. How did you make your big break in Europe? Uh, well, I was very lucky enough to uh, attend uh, San St. Martins, where obviously Galliano and uh, McQueen and Stan McCartney were graduated. So that really helps, you know, in opening doors, uh, you know, for me. And uh, and you know, I think I believe that you know that you have to work very hard. And uh, you know, be passionate enough with what you do, and uh, be focused. What was the first door that opened for you? Do you still remember what it felt like? When I got accepted to uh, show during London Fashion Week uh, for the first time on the on, on the official on schedule, uh, there was a big kind of like kudos because you know I've only been in business at that time for like about a year and a half, and to be invited to be. You know, participate and shows you know the on schedule. You know, to me, it was a very, very big honor. Does a designer have to be? Do a designer have to be in 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 London or Paris or in Milan to be able to make it big in the world market? Uh, I would say yes, because I think then you are getting the journalists and you know the people, the buyers, for example, that buys the collection. You know, like boutiques from all from all over the world attends the fashion week. You know, like in New York, in London, in Paris, and in uh, Milan, and it does give you a bigger scope. So this is it. A fashion star is going to be born tonight, and you are lucky enough to experience this very exciting moment.
Okay, quickly, your thoughts on uh, tonight's show. It was great. I think there's a lot of talent there, and I think it'll be difficult to choose a winner. There were some great artistry in the designs, a lot of commercialism in it. Which one is more important? I think it's important that there's a creative uh, element in a, a young designer, and that's what we're looking for. And this award goes to a young designer, would help him make a, a, a wonderful career uh, as a fashion designer. So I'm really excited for this uh, young person who's going to take this award. I think you know, all, all the designers you've, you've seen, you know, you know, from Singapore, from Vietnam, they're all very good, they're all winners to me. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Mercedes-Benz Asia Fashion Award 2005 is Mr. Jimmy Nang from Panatabinang from Thailand. And now I'm right here with the 2005 winner of the Asia Fashion Award from Thailand. Tom, who did not uh, notice your designs in the backstage because they were all zipped up like bags. Where was your in inspiration from? All right, thank you very much. Congratulations, Tom. Well, if I can understand that, I think Tom is indeed the designer to watch out for for 2005. He is the Asia Fashion Award winner for this year, and he did live up to the name of this show, Original by Design. I'm Timothy Go. I'll see you again. Saturday on Original by Design. Elegant, bold, hot. These are the words for this year's Singapore Fashion Festival. Join me, Timothy Go, as we witness the making of the next big Asian fashion designer right here on Original by Design. A special coverage of the Singapore Fashion Festival. Saturday, 9.30 p.m. Tonight on Original by Design. Elegant, bold, hot. These are the words for this year's Singapore Fashion Festival. Join me, Timothy Go, as we witness the making of the next big Asian fashion designer right here on Original by Design. A special coverage of the Singapore Fashion Festival. Tonight at 9.30.
Saturday on Original by Design. Elegant, bold, hot. These are the words for this year's Singapore Fashion Festival. Join me, Timothy Go, as we witness the making of the next big Asian fashion designer right here on Original by Design. A special coverage of the Singapore Fashion Festival. Saturday at these times. Tonight on Original by Design. Elegant, bold, hot. These are the words for this year's Singapore Fashion Festival. Join me, Timothy Go, as we witness the making of the next big Asian fashion designer right here on Original by Design. A special coverage of the Singapore Fashion Festival. Tonight at these times. Saturday on Original by Design. Elegant, bold, hot. These are the words for this year's Singapore Fashion Festival. Join me, Timothy Go, as we witness the making of the next big Asian fashion designer right here on Original by Design. A special coverage of the Singapore Fashion Festival. Saturday, 9.30 p.m. Tonight on Original by Design. Elegant, bold, hot. These are the words for this year's Singapore Fashion Festival. Join me, Timothy Go, as we witness the making of the next big Asian fashion designer right here on Original by Design. A special coverage of the Singapore Fashion Festival. Tonight at 9.30. Saturday on Original by Design. Elegant, bold, hot. These are the words for this year's Singapore Fashion Festival. Join me, Timothy Go, as we witness the making of the next big Asian fashion designer right here on Original by Design. A special coverage of the Singapore Fashion Festival. Saturday at these times. Tonight on Original by Design. Elegant, bold, hot. These are the words for this year's Singapore Fashion Festival. Join me, Timothy Go, as we witness the making of the next big Asian fashion designer right here on Original by Design. A special coverage of the Singapore Fashion Festival. Tonight at these times. <laughs> 